Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Masiska. I'm the Director of Emergency Medicine for Riverside University Health System. And today, as summer's approaching, we're excited to get outside and get to our activities. I uh, just want to share some uh, safe practices to keep uh, our families and, and our kids uh, healthy as we go back out into the ocean, lakes, rivers, and pools. Some shocking things. Um, every day uh, in the United States, about 10 people uh, drown and have a fatal non-accidental drowning. That's over 3,600 uh, people per year. Some key things to think about, um, you know, when we look at keeping our kids and our family members safe. The first one is to have an enclosure around our swimming pools uh, and have a self-closing pool uh, gate around the pool. Swimming in lifeguarded areas really reduces the incidence of drownings. We know from data that people are much more likely to drown in a lake, river, or the ocean in a non-lifeguarded zone. It family parties to have a designated and sober uh, lifeguard whose primary job is to watch the kids and adults in the pool. Uh, never swim alone. Don't mix alcohol and water activities. A couple other things, getting our young children swimming and learning to float. So our county has a number of programs and resources available to parents to start our kids young to get them you know, safe. I and mean, even adults uh, learning to swim is crucial and not swimming alone. Lastly is CPR training. So bystander CPR. So shocking is it Bystanders that initiate CPR can have a two to three fold increase in survival by early initiation. As uh, the weather's warming up and we're excited to be outside and swimming and uh, headed to the river and to the lakes and down to the beach, uh, we thought it was just uh, crucial to sort of share uh, some key points about uh, drownings, how they occur, when they occur, uh, and most importantly, things that we can do uh, to prevent finding ourselves or a loved one in those situations.